Now in this particular video we're going to start writing the code, Java code for our application. And I'm not going to be able to fit it all within one particular video, so I'm going to break this one up for our code. But I'm going to go ahead and close the virtual machine that I had running from the previous one. I'll go ahead and hit close on this one. Looks like it's having a little bit of a problem there. And I'm going to go ahead now and switch back over here. Here's my main XML. I'm going to close out of my main XML. And I'm done with those. And if I just take a quick peek at the r.java file, you should see that our objects, there they are, button 1, button 2, edit text 1 are all in here now as part of this ID class. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and work on our source code. So there's our project2activity.java. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. We're going to work with a couple different things that we've got here. Now, in the last project, when we did the onClick listener, we actually created it within this onClick or onCreate method. I'm going to do it a little bit differently here. And so you can see here, public class project to activity extends activity. This is the default. I'm going to add just two words here. Um, the, I'm going to add implements. There's a keyword called implements. Implements, and then you'll see that it turns purple like that. It points out the fact that it's a keyword. And now we're going to type here on click listen, or there we go, on click listener. And this is where we're going to actually put it now, as appear on our class for our project to activity. Now you're going to notice right off the bat that I've got a little bit of a uh, problem with the red squiggly line underneath it. It says the online cl click listener cannot be resolved. And there are a couple of different ways to fix it. Now I mentioned when we first started project 2 here that we're going to have different ways of importing it. One of these nice things is, is under the fixes, if we need to import something, usually it's one of the top options that I've got. It says import on click listener and they're going to tell us where it was located. It's going to be in that android.view.view package that we've got. I'm going to actually double, double click it and you can see up here at the top if I expand that it imported android.view.view.onclicklistener for us and so that's been implemented already so that red squiggly line that I had underneath this onclicklistener has now gone away and we've got another problem if I hover over project 2 activity it tells us the type project 2 activity must implement the inherited abstract method view that onclicklistener.onclick view and so basically it's telling us we need to set up that onclick um, method. I don't have it set up so there's one way to do that and that's just click down here where it says add unimplemented methods. If I click on that you'll notice it created this method down here for us to work with public void on click you can see mine says view v and it's been set up for us and so this is all set up now for us to work with and it kind of is a little bit more streamlined than the way that I did it on project one so hopefully you uh, start using this particular setup rather than what I did on project one if you're going to have multiple objects to work with and I've got multiple buttons already to work with and an edit text so I've, I'm going to go ahead and use this way instead especially when we're doing conditional statements now a couple other things that I want to work with I've got to create these button objects and the edit text object to work with on this particular one so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'm going to do that here under the public class and so like we did in project one I'm going to go ahead and space down the at override and we're going to go ahead now and type in button and I'm going to go ahead and call this one just b1 this time around and put the semicolon so we're going to create this button b1 and you're going to see that I've got a problem already and the problem is if you remember from project one we didn't import anything and this is actually a widget and I haven't imported any of the widgets and so one of the nice things that I've got here is I can just choose import button and it tells me it's the android.widget if I click on it and look up here you'll see import android.widget.button so I went ahead and imported exactly what I was looking for now if I hit enter I can go ahead and do the second button that I had which is button B2 and I'll go ahead and put the semicolon after that we also had that edit text that I want to work with so I'm going to go ahead and type in edit text and then I'm going to call this one just ET1 and it's just kind of a nice abbreviated um, n uh, name for this particular object and edit text is going to have a problem and if you look here import edit text android.widget these are both widgets however 
since I don't have the asterisk after the widget, it doesn't know that it's, it's not the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that it imported the widget.edit text now. And so all of those objects have now been imported here for us to work with, and I can now link them to this. And so that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to come down here under my onCreate method that I've got here. I'm going to come here to the end of this r.layout.main, and then I've got the semicolon, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And on the onCreate method, we're going to go ahead and set up these links from the B1 that I created here to the button 1 that's on my XML. So I'll start by typing in B1, and then we're going to do is set equal to, and then it's going to be a button, so I need to put it in there as a button in the parentheses. After that, I need to find it by the identification, which I'm going to type in find by, or find view, sorry by ID. And then in the parentheses I'm going to go ahead and put the R dot ID dot and you can see there's button one. Button one. And then don't forget on this programming code I need to end it with a semicolon. And so I've gone ahead now and set up the link whenever our application is created. I've set up the link from button one uh, that's on my XML to this B1 that's here on my Java code. And so now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for B2. Put B2 equals button and then I'm going to go ahead and do the find view by ID. If you remember it is case sensitive so you need to have it exactly what I have here. Uh, the capital R dot and we're going to do the ID dot and this one's going to be button 2 and then with the semicolon. So now these have been linked together and I also need to work with that edit text. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the edit text, which is going to be ET1 equals, and it's going to be edit text, and then it's going to be the find view by ID. It's going to be r dot id dot edit text one. And I'm going to go ahead and put the semicolon at the end of that and now we've got them all linked so we've got those three objects we've created up here are all linked to the objects that are on my XML main XML page and now that we've got them linked that's going to end this video when we come back here on the next video we're going to talk about setting the on click listener for each one of those buttons and then we're going to talk about the conditional statements that we'll need within this on click method that we've got